Substitute. He's currently in his Challenger promos, which is pretty cool. And uh, Complexity, you all know and love them. They were in uh, LCS Split 1. Now they're currently out. And uh, they have qualified for relegations again to get back into the LCS. Yeah, and both of these teams are definitely... One of them is the very hyped up kind of superstar team I'm going to wind up saying with Otter, Bishu, they had Quas and Nidus on their squad as well. But on the flip side, you have Complexity who are, they've tasted LCS and they definitely want to get back into there. Both of these teams have been looking extremely dominant in the games that they have been playing. But with that wild card Yuzuki kind of coming in, I have actually talked to the side of Gold Gaming Los Angeles a little bit. And even though Yuzuki, he was a extremely competitive player, Back before actually LCS is kind of a thing, when he was still a part of Cloud9, his champion pool has shrunk so much since then. It's kind of more of like a hit and go learning experience of what he can play now and what he can't play. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it makes it extremely difficult for Complexity to ban against him because of that. Yeah, and uh, now he's got a lease currently hovered over. That could be Kev's going with that one in the jungle. He's uh, pretty infamous for that. Jax gets locked in instantly for Mega Zero, though, which is one of his staple top laners since Renekton is currently banned out. So, gonna go with that instead of Vladimir, which is interesting. And then uh, Corky, gonna get picked up here for Chooper on that AD carry roll, though. Yeah, and this is, uh, well, the Corky is left open after banning out the Vyronekton and Cassidy. So, that's kind of what happens when these teams wind up knowing each other very well, is just that they know what picks are gonna be going for one another, and they leave open some of those overpowered pickups so corky winds up slipping through jacks or mega zero which he's been absolutely fantastic on has gone through as well but at the same time well we had corkez getting a lease which you've seen him if you don't necessarily know corkez you've seen around solo queue it's one of one of the champions that i personally know him to play very very well and they leave open an ap cannon pickup which could be going to yuzuki in top lane as we saw a dominating performance on another ap top laner in vladimir just the other night yeah, and Vladimir was uh, very, very strong. It was crazy. But uh, now they take Cannon, which could be uh, mid Cannon. It could go top for Yuki. It's a very safe top laner. And going up against Jax, it could work out fairly well if he wants to go for a, a Doran's Blade start and start poking him out and harassing him. But if it's a Cannon put into a 2v1 situation, that's where it could kind of bite him in the butt and uh, mm -hmm. be pretty annoying, especially against the Corky Fiddlesticks, as we're seeing for MIA, which is another one of his staple supports. And after what Daydreaming did, I'm pretty sure it's going to force a cleanse out of Otter. But I think if they get a Zyra or maybe a Thresh to initiate some fights, then that Fiddlesticks could be shut down if there is no lane swaps and it's a 2v2 bot. Well, I mean, Fiddlesticks Corky, we saw what Fiddlesticks could do in a 1v2 matchup last game, as well as just in a overall team composition last game. So definitely a support that you don't want to trifle with. And MIA, he's kind of perfected the support Fiddlesticks down to a science. He was mm -hmm. one of the first ones to really bring it out in North America as kind of like his staple, even band worthy choice so it's going to be dangerous in his hands and when you combine that with the additional fear that lot of mortis's nocturne is going to be putting down like you said if cleanse is not picked up here from otter he's going to have a really bad time that that'd be about five seconds of fear time which would be a little absurd and it's probably going to force merc treads out of uh, most of the champions from the side of go gaming los angeles and it's going to be nidus remain picking up nami to go for to go with the caitlin which is a pretty good matchup that tie caller's blessing that e ability from nami will give caitlin the extra magic damage on hit and uh be really annoying and if she maxes that in lane first which could be optional she could max the ebb and flow for the heal to sustain as well as poke out with that but i think maxing the tie cost busting is the right choice but i don't know i'm not the challenger level pro <laughs> <laughs> i just just play support that's all i do and now we're gonna wait for the final pick it's gonna be a mid laner for Prolly, which is still very up in the air he could actually go with a lot of options here to go against that gragas yeah, there's definitely a couple things you can pick up. Unfortunately, Orianna might not be the best matchup for him in this case, which we see him probably kind of default to in the past. Fizz is open, although I don't necessarily know probably to be the most prominent Fizz player. He has a pretty decent matchup against that Gragas, as well as Ari, which could just wind up being a skill matchup, whereas whoever kind of has a little bit more jungle pressure might wind up coming in and being the one who winds up picking that up. They're hovering over Karma. I don't think that's really going to be what they so choose to go mm -hmm. for. And I just want to pedal they back locked it for in. a second. They locked it in. Ooh, so, ooh. I'll have to figure out, is that actually mid lane karma coming out they for Polly? Or is it, a, yes. is it a placeholder? Yeah. Okay. okay. All so right. we're going to have let's, karma. Let's, let's go over some of the early things about this karma pick. That mantra to Q at the early stage of the game, if he's running flat magic pen, is going to destroy you. <laughs> You're going to have painful. a really rough time. 
I had a solo queue game back in, in time one last night where we had a Zed against the Karma. The Karma was getting destroyed early, but then late game when she had some CDR as well as some flat AP, she just destroyed Zed. And she has so much utility in her kit. The Montred E, the shield, gives an AoE shield in a huge radius yeah. as well as doing damage. And if he maxes W in lane, which is always optional, you get percentage life back. And it's huge with the mantra on that. And then it does dot damage, obviously, and then roots. So the mantra, the karma pick is actually not a bad idea. I kind of like it against Gragas, who's going to have to harass in melee range anyway. When Gragas goes to body slam up down upon Karma, one of the things that Oriana has, she has Command Protect and Dissonance to kind of trade effectively, or not as effectively against Gragas, but she doesn't really have a response after that. Karma, she could pop the shield on herself, Mantra Q, and if Gragas stays in there, like you said, the damage from the AoE popping is just absolutely insane. So there's definitely a good setup here to maybe have Karma come out ahead in lane against Gragas. I don't necessarily know how it would function in a lane swap situation if yeah. they were to potentially send Caitlyn Nami mid like we've seen in the Korean metagame. Although, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I, I was going to say alternate attack actually. Kerp, their top laner, has taken Karma top multiple times in the mm -hmm. EU LCS. So I'm really excited to finally see Karma kind of making her way over here after it had been a, a not even a niche pick. It's just a pick that people started playing in Europe. And in 2v1, she can pretty much shove as fast as the uh, 2v1ing lane would be able to. Yes. She, that Q is, a, what, a four-second cooldown at level one or five? I don't remember. But it's just so easily spammable. And with the mantra, it helps shove as well. But either way, <laughs> the uh, the composition coming from Complexity is actually really good, too. She can throw that mantra E on everybody and just speed them up to catch up and help Fiddlesticks close the distance of Fear, help Noxter and Jax close with Stun and Fear. But uh, GGLA side, they have really good initiation. They have Explosive Cast, they have Bubble, yes. they have Tidal Wave, they have uh, Slicing Maelstrom and Cocoon from Elise. So both teams looking extremely strong. Yeah, and while, while we marvel over the Karma pickup and have all game to talk about these two compositions, let's just remind you guys, while the game is loading, don't forget to head over and show some love to our sponsors down below the stream, just like Loot Crate. They are a monthly gear and swag club for those that live the gamer lifestyle, which is, well... Pretty much all of us here. <laughs> For the best new gear, snacks, toys, hardware, art, and more every single month. It's a monthly thing, guys. Check out Loot Crate, and don't forget, by clicking the referral link down below the stream, you are directly helping support us here at the Salt Mines and ACL. <laughs> yeah, and with that, we're going to go to a quick commercial break as well as some music. So sit tight and enjoy.
You are the wind beneath my wings, Optimus Tom. I, I'm the magic carpet underneath your butt. Uh, <laughs> or the magic computer chair underneath my butt. Either way, we are loaded in and finally out of the pause for game five of tonight, the final game between GGLA and Complexity. Well, it's definitely going to be an amazing game here. It's like we said, both these teams at the top of the challenger circuit rankings. Complexity here in the NACL. They're 4-0, looking to make it a perfect 5-0 to meet Coast at the top of the ladder here. But GGLA, they're definitely looking to put a wrench in the gears here of Complexity. And, well, early on, they're not going to. They're just going to give way to some of these early wards. Yeah, and take control of the blue side is MIA. He's got those uh, five green wards, so looking to control it quite heavily, heavily as they rotate around. And do not spot anybody out just yet. Ping is going on like crazy. They did see Elise over there. They know there's a ward over there. And they are just looking to five-man roam towards red side now as Complexity is trying to control both buffs, apparently. As Oh, okay, Knight of Sermaine is going to walk around. Is he going to flash Fear? I thought he was for a second. Actually, I don't think he even started with Fear. Looks like he started with nothing as he just drops wards and looks to force something out here as he throws the crow. Yeah, so they did want to pick up the Dark Wind. It's not all too uncommon for Fiddle6 to want to do that, but GGLA playing extremely passive. While Complexity was running around their blue buff area, they warded down on the red side. So they're going to see not only a ward in the lane to see if there's any lane swap shenanigans going on early, but a ward by the blue buff. And at the same time, they just decide that, hey, rather than trying to get in a confrontation, we're just going to walk around and ward the red side at the same time you guys do so. So everybody pretty much has complete vision of the map at level one. So there's not going to be a lot of early aggression from either team, but there may be this buff steal here. There will be this buff steal from both sides, actually, as Mega Zero might actually spot out Yuzuki and Elise doing the red. Uh, looks like he actually just walks right on by them and they get away with the steal from respectively both sides here. As Jax does turn around and will notice Yuzuki probably is poking away at Bishu while he does get the stun off, auto attacks getting applied and going to be successful steals from both sides. All right. Well, now that we have the bus stolen away from either side, they just kind of equalized and all that vision just winds up trading red buff for red buff. Let's take a look at how all the rest of these lanes are going to be going down, specifically this Karma against Gragas lane, where Karma is already zoning Gragas out against his tower and denying him a chunk of CS by just spamming down those inner flames. Yeah, the inner flame with the mantra is probably one of the fastest pushing abilities in the game, as well as down bot here already we see the Crow Fear getting thrown out to Nidus, and the Tycho is supposed to be applied to Otter, but he cannot do anything as he's already getting bursted out there by the Phosphorus Bomb auto attack combination from Trooper. And this mid lane matchup, I, I just want to watch it all day, but unfortunately, the directed camera will not let me. As up top, though, <laughs> uh, the stun connects with Yuzuki, forcing him to use that uh, Lightning Rush to get on out. Yeah, and this is actually a very interesting lane matchup because Jax is normally not as strong early on, and Kennen has a lot of auto attack harassment. By going for that Doran shield, though, and getting Counter Strike, Mega Zero is going to be able to apply a lot of pressure down onto Yuzuki, whereas Yuzuki, he kind of has to harass from far away. If Jax gets on him, Kennen's going to have a bad time, but if Kennen Ooh. can run away, Jax is going to have a bad time. But it looks like Mega Zero's got the best of this. Yeah, he's making Kennen have a pretty bad time. He's not letting rush very defensively. And potentially could be a dive coming up as a lot of mortars heads towards that wave to shove it down and force Yuzuki to go back. While mid, Bishu having a really rough time against this Karma, already down about 9 CS. Yeah, Karma's just continuing to zone out Bishu. He's actually just made him use all of his health potions as well. So completely out of consumables. This is not a healthy lane. Not a healthy lane at all. But the passive from Bishu on that guy, I guess, will help him sustain up very heavily, which is one of the main reasons why Gragas is so strong. We saw a lot of more just diving through the turret there, eating two turret shots for his trouble, just checking to see if Yuzuki is gone. But down here, MIA throws off the crow. It's not going to bounce on Nidus, though. Nidus is eating quite a bit of damage using that ebb and flow to heal up. Auto attacks coming out, and Nidus is pretty much 2 me winning right there, as that is the manliest Nami ever. Yeah, definitely. And Nami, of course, she can force those trade situations by having that ebb and flow. It's going to bounce between ally enemy, allied enemy until they wind up uh, just basically having nowhere to bounce anymore. So even though Cheaper and MIA, when they get close, Cheaper's in a good trade situation. Having that Nami to kind of come out uh, on the flip side here, it's forcing Cheaper back early on after early aggression. And speaking of early aggression, Ignites come down, Venomous Bite comes down, and she uses the Mantra W to heal up a little bit. The pot is not going to be enough. And as Repel comes down, we see Cleanse go down in bot lane to start to stop that event, but it's not enough. A lot of Mortars going in. 2v1 getting blown up by the barrel. The Venomous Bite as well as the auto attack from Bishu picking up a double kill with the help of Core Kevs. Taking down Prolly and a lot of Mortars and giving Gragas two kills is not something you ever want. 
No, especially that Gragas is Bishu because he is a monster out of that mid lane. And as soon as those wards went down from the side of complexity, is, or as soon as those wards expired, that's when Cortez wound up striking. He put down the wards at the same time, so they knew when they were going to be pretty much either up or down. And he made his way through a very aggressive pushing Karma. Good thing Karma had a lot of CS and forced Gragas against her tower. Bad thing. She was extremely susceptible to that gang. And with Nocturne in top lane, it was just an easy way for them to capitalize on some overaggression from Complexity early on. Yeah, then Nocturne came in really late and tried to 2v1. Nocturne has a lot of early damage that he can apply, but against the Gragas with the barrel that it slows your attack speed and then bursts mm -hmm. down quite heavily, not something you ever want to really go in for. But either way, still Bishu looking strong. Has blue buff, has Chalice, as well as probably having Chalice. So both of them going for some heavy magic resistance and most likely Athenes and Holy Grail since their first items. Well, we well see right now all the lanes just kind of settling down for a second. Actually, Cortez might be making an appearance in mid lane again here. Uh oh, Flash Cocoon coming in, Spiderling, and the Venomous Bite as well as the Explosive Cast with the Barrel. That is probably going to go down. Chain's going to connect, but Body Slam from the Fat Man and the Spiderling actually picking up the kill for Kebs. <laughs> Scumbag Spiderling picks up the kill right there. It looked like he actually wanted to give it to Bishu too, but uh, unfortunately, the little root in place, not being able to switch forms quick enough, was going to be able to get that kill for Cortez. Not the worst thing in the world, though. No, not at all. Giving a jungler a kill is never a bad thing. Well, the tie Callers Blessing and Evan Flow Harass coming in from Nidus is doing wonders for the spot lane of Otter and Nidus. But Super and MIA are not having a great time as the CS lead is slowly climbing for Otter almost at uh, about 20 with the Q connection and a lot of Mortis here. Body Slam Barrel! Everything coming in. He shields through it though, which is really good with the Spiderlings picking up another kill. A lot Man. of Mortis. God, that's... That snowball out of the mid lane is just devastating. And everything Complexity does to help is hurts in bottom lane. Headshot coming in, as well as the ebb and flow and the tie colors busting helping up a kill. They're diving bot lane right now at seven minutes. They're going past the tier one, going in, forcing the flash out of Chooper. And Bishu and Kevs are just the roaming monsters of this game and gonna get a tier one for it. Well, this is the go-to method of Caitlyn games. It's pretty much, let's take down the towers as quickly as possible. And when you have a rotating jungle mid lane gang squad that have already accumulated four kills seven minutes into the game, well, that uh, go-to method becomes a lot easier. They're forcing complexity way back on their side of the map. They have absolute dragon control despite these wards from complexity. And this is impressive. GGLA, this is the aggressive side of teams that Nidus has been on in the past with Oh, actually, there's the dragon fight going on, so I'm gonna shut up. Darkness comes in, Kevs gets blown up there as he's going to spider from repels away, but Bishu just laying in the chew for the crow comes out, the flash of the smite is going to Lot of Mortis to get it, they give him the shield and get out of there. Fear going out to Otter, they're trying not to chase this one down as the Mont as not the Mantra Q, but the Q comes out and slows them a little bit. And Dragon is gonna go over to Complexity. Surprisingly enough, they trade one for one, and that is gonna be in favor of Complexity. Yeah, Complexity gets a little bit back on that one. I was saying actually GGLA had some uh, almost complete dragon control of that one, but Complexity just rushed it and wound up getting into a fight. So the Smite Seal comes in from Lot of Mortis, and now he's actually gonna be stealing away a blue buff at the same time. So Complexity, they kind of collect themselves very quick off that when they're like, hey, we screwed up in the beginning stages of the game, but they take advantage of GGLA's aggressive calls. I was saying, Nidus, when he was on To Be Determined, had a little bit of trouble calling shots between him and Heaven Time, but on here on GGLA, he really makes those buff calls, and he really makes those objective controls, and he's extremely aggressive. So if Complexity know this, which apparently they do, they know to rush immediately to objectives to fight, and they came out ahead because of it. And with this, we are going to see uh, Yuzuki with that pink cord in the brush, taking control of the lane a little bit. But either way, Mega Zero, he's not winning in farm. Oh my god, they're going to trade pink cords here, aren't they? Oh, they're not actually as the uh, W. Going to give him an auto attack reset as well as let him secure that pink ward. Kevs is up here, though. Going to bait out the jump. Slicing Mushroom comes in. The stun's going to come out as well from Kevs. He's going to use Smite on the cannon minion to get in there. And now chasing this one down, Venomous Bite in a couple seconds. Going to repel on top of him, force out the flash from Mega Zero. And are they gonna dive this one? It does not look like they are, and Mega Zero will get out of there while Otter and Nidus look to push down this mid lane. Well, that's just the power of having a Jax when you have two AP champions ganking him. He has the Grandmaster's Might, and it's just gonna give him that extra little bonus of extra magic resistance and armor to kind of combo between them. So Kennen and uh, Elise not able to really get a kill on him, and they blow everything for that. So really good job of Mega Zero just surviving in that case. He's gonna actually get back to the top lane and defend this tower as Lana Morris just kind of shoved the wave out as well. So I don't even know if they're gonna wind up losing tower for this complexity. Like I said, just being able to bounce back after an early deficit, they have extreme mental fortitude. 
Yep. And now just <laughs> that fortitude could come into a huge effect. They have done it multiple times in games. They've come back from huge deficits and relied on that Mega Zero and probably mid lane. But the way that GGLA is rotating, the way that they're controlling the blue side of the jungle with those pink wards is just snowballing phenomenally for them. And even MIA doesn't have a sight stone yet. Went for the early Philo stone to try to ramp up his gold uh, generation a little bit. But Nidus remain with that early Philo stone, trying to do a lot. But there is the mantra of W to heal probably up. And the explosive cast missing just barely there. And Bishu will not get the kill, but still has a blue buff and looking strong. I'm actually a little interested into why MIA went for that Philosopher's Stone extremely early on on Fiddlesticks. Now, he's been, he and Nidus have both been known to advocate going for Ruby Sight Stone and Mobility Boots, and those are the core items that you need on pretty much any kind of support. Anything after that is a little bit of a luxury. And while we see that ideal coming out from Nidus and the rest of his team, just going for an immense amount of pink wars off of that Dragon Gold and the early Tower Gold that they got, the side of complexity, they've kind of just been like, well, we're just going to move across the map with their team rather than going in and trying to keep it through vision control. So their kind of groups are little kind of one or two going back and forth together are the ones that are giving them that buff seal they got earlier on blue buff or just keeping tabs on where the enemy team is going to be rather than having to put down all that vision. Yep, and now Autonitis up top. The turret up top is almost dead as well, forcing Lot of Mortis, forcing Mega Zero to sit up there. Red buff is on Lot of Mortis. We could see a 2v2, but Kev's, Kez is looking to make this a 3v2 as he shows his presence, has red buff, and a few more auto attacks will cinch this turret for them. As Otter is using the Tide Caller's Blessing to lay into Mega Zero there and keep him back. Dustbringer gonna connect with Otter. Darkness is coming in. He's gonna try to get what he can. Bubble goes through the shield. There is the Crow Storm coming from the side. MIA flashing in. Bottom order is getting very low. The passive was not enough to keep it sustained. Kevs is gonna go down to MIA, who is going to transfer a red buff to Otter. And now he's in a kite away at Mega Zero, who cannot catch up with the Nidus Remain with the passive from the Ebb and Flow. They're trying to trade here. A bubble Ooh. from the side coming in. The red buff is gonna try to pick up the kill here. He cleanses the stun and the red buff finally. Secures the kill one. Mid lane ignite goes down. Explosive cast gonna probably. One more body slam gonna come through. He flashes in barrel with a flash from probably to dodge away from the barrel. It's gonna keep him alive as well as that E, the shield to come in and keep him in the lane, I guess. Wow, and that was just, the mid lane was just like mechanical skill versus mechanical skill as both of them using their flashes to get damage or dodge in that circumstance. The explosive cast used to disengage and then re-engage the flash body slam. All in all, it just comes out to, hey, we're both pretty good at mid lane champions. So let's just fall back and farm and maybe go buy some items. But in that top lane matchup there, they're able to take down the tower, which was crucial because they started the fight kind of in tower range. They got it down, and after MIA came with the Crow Storm, they were able to turn around because there's no threat of having to dive through a tower to deal lots of damage to us. The red buff transfer onto Caitlyn was crucial. Had that red buff not gotten onto Caitlyn, Jax could have killed Nami yes. before Knight have kind of put that no look fade over the shoulder their bubble perfectly in place. The cleanse was just icing on the cake in that trade. Yeah, the cleanse is definitely icing on the cake. I don't think he even needed to do that because the red buff finally finished on Mega Zero there. Pink ward from Kev's all over the place in that uh, dragon side of the jungle. It's coming up in 30 seconds. The river is cleared for them and they are doing the best that they can. Monstered up Q comes out here in the inner flame to clear out that front line of melee minions. But now we do have the siege coming in as that below half tier one turret is gonna fall in the next few auto attacks. But Lot of Mortis and Shooper have something to say about it with their Dustbringer and Rocket combination. Barrel, ooh, gonna chunk away at a little bit of Shooper's life there. Yeah, and uh, Cheaper, unfortunately, he's got that phage, he has the life part of his Trinity Force, but it's not necessarily the entire item, which he, he's going to want to try to look to get as quickly as possible. Whereas on the flip side, Otter having four kills to his name right now. Holy crap, he's already got a Bloodthirster on his Ooh. side. So that rotation from Caitlyn taking down the Outer Towers, this mid lane, it's only a matter of time before it goes down. But in the meanwhile, on the bottom lane here, Yuzuki and Mega Zero continuing to have their little duel. Just keep slapping him in the face with a hockey stick and that cannon is like, please stop, I don't want to get hit anymore. The dodge stunning him up and just locking down some serious damage with the passive from the ulti. And we do still have the inner flame span coming out from Prolly, but they're just going to face tank this herd and take it down. Cocoon not going to connect and Otter gets the last hit. As that is all three outer turrets down, really good rotation from GGLA. This is something we usually see from Complexity when they run Caitlyn though. Mm -hmm. And by taking that Caitlyn away from Cheaper, they've... Well, actually, they didn't even take it away. Cheaper just picked... Corky for his AD carry when it was left open after the picks and bans. They got it in their first two pickups here. So going with the Corky over the Caitlyn, and they might actually be paying for it a little bit. Dragon has come up though, and Complexity are all grouped up in the mid lane for position, whereas GGLA have had to recall. This is probably going to be a free Dragon. Otter trying to get the pedals over Peacemaker, but it's not going to wind up working. 
Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't the Peacemaker is good. It does a lot of damage with that Bloodthirster, but it doesn't beat Smite. So that's going to be two dragons for Complexity who mm -hmm. have stolen, who, who stole away the first one and now just getting a uh, second one flat up for free. It's kind of equalizing the gold a little bit, but either way, they're still down. 2.9k, but here comes a crowstorm over the wall, fearing Izuki, getting in with the stuff the bubble comes out, the monster of Q just bursting him down, Mega Zero with the help of probably gonna help get probably that kill, but Lo Otter is coming, the snipe comes out, Mega's gonna block it, the flash repel coming in, the venomous bite picks up the kill, the cocoon connects as well, Otter just laying into Mega Zero right now, Kev's just looking to get him, but a tide caller is blessed, he's gonna help him with that one, the venomous bite leading the spiderlings on with a neurotoxin in human form for that uh, Elise right there gonna help pick up the double kill for Kevs and they just turn it into a three for one while well, Lord of Mortis runs to the Bishu here. He's gonna flash with the fear, get hit by the explosive cast. The fear comes through, red buff applying a lot of damage here. Very reminiscent of NK Inc. when he played this uh, <laughs> this Nocturne and he's chasing him down. Red buff applied, Dustbringer coming out, fear tether, the dot damage and the auto attacks with red buff gonna take him down thanks to the blue buff cooldown reduction. <sighs> that was... Wow, a long chase. <laughs> yeah, but while the jungler's in top lane, soloing the mid laner, the rest of T uh, the rest of GGLA is down here taking the second tier bottom tower. So that's the fourth tower of the game compared to zero on complexity side. And going back to that dive on the tower, Yuzuki was outright dead man, just cold out dead until that bubble landed and locked up the fiddlesticks in the ultimate and the jacks to apply the damage and try to get the kill on Yuzuki. Hero bubbles from Nidus Remain twice now have turned around engagements using Mega Zero's Jax to jump in. Yep, and now we see the pink words coming out from the side of Complexa. They want to control these lanes a little bit. There's the speed up coming in from Karma. But Jax can't really just turret dive just yet. He's only got Phage. He's building towards the Sheen next. Trying to get that Trinity Force. But up top, Lodomortis put work up there as he did clear a turret. And that'll be the first turret of the game. They're looking to try to make a second one, but the Wave clear from the side of GGLA is huge as the Dark Winds comes out, bouncing between the Spiralings, which is pretty cool. And uh, the Tether from probably gonna just keep him away while Lotta Mortis might gonna be a sneaky little Nocturne and jump on a Bishu here, but he does have teammates around the corner. So not the best choice. Bubble comes out, not gonna connect. No, that's uh, one missed bubble for Nidus right there, but Lotta Mortis doing a wise thing to disengage here. Both teams kind of collapsing around this mid lane and something complexity now to generate some more tower pressure. Top lane one did wind up going down. Now they're going to be the ones to try to rotate. We talked about in a a poke composition that Curse Academy had. The 18 minute mark is usually where you look to try to siege. They don't have a poke comp for complexity, but Corky and Karma can kind of fit a similar role. So this mid game spike right here, now that Corky has Trinity Force, this is where the side of complexity is going to be looking to try to take back some of these objectives. He got it and Valkyrie away from the bubble finally. That's going to be the second turret of the game for complexity. While four turrets are still down uh, in favor of GGLA. So Complexity trying to even up as much as possible in that back animation for uh, Nocturne. Looks pretty cool there. He canceled the back, actually. He might try to fight Otter. Uh, I don't know about this one. Otter yeah, has a red good. buff. He's got a lot of itemization on him. And even the lot of Mortis, he might be 1, 3, and 2 right now with the Spirit Stone of the Ancient Golem. I don't think eventually he's going to be able to take down Otter. But now this is Complexity. They've taken two dragons. They're getting the last outer tower, and they're kind of diminishing all the advantages that GGLA had in the early game. This is the problem. Caitlyn compositions are really good at taking outer towers, but not necessarily at seizing the inner towers. And here's oh, we'll the fight that I said was just about to happen <laughs> <laughs> with Lot of Mortis and Otter. Red buff is kiting a little bit, but he's got Dustbringer available too very soon. Darkness, the paranoia is available. And now is he gonna go for it? Fear's gonna connect. He's got cleanse. Well, now bot the Zonius Hourglass and the Slicing Maelstrom coming in. Fear and Flash, but Otter actually took down Lot of Mortis in a very close duel in a 1v1. That red buff coming to effect while Yuzuki gives the kill over to MIA. So one for one globally, but a red buff was just transferred to Otter. Another uh, red buff, a blue buff was now transferred to Otter, I think. Yeah, and so uh, Otter winds up getting a blue buff for himself oh, on top didn't. of his... Oh, uh, he did it? it okay, faded. the blue buff expired, but he winds up still having that red buff on him. He gets another kill onto the AD carry here from GGLA in combination with, well, Cortez and Bishu, who have a lot of kills under their belt as well. It's a very powerful pickup here. Mega Zero recalling in plain sight, and Nidus not able to get the ebb and flow off. But at the same time, GGLA, they've realized, okay, we've given up some outer map pressure. Let's try to regain some pressure of our own. They're pushing down into the inner mid tower here with Bishu, who's kind of put on some split push Gragas shoes, which uh, isn't the most normalized use we see.
seen from him, but his explosive cast hasn't been needed for these kind of scrappy engagements that the rest of the teams have really been getting into. If Complexity groups up for an engagement like they did around the two dragons, the first one, GGLA, they were just too low to wind up coming out ahead in that trade. The second one, they just didn't group up and they've been pushing elsewhere on the map. So while it looks like Complexity wants to be the ones to group up, despite having like a, a Jax and a Nocturne that are extremely good at picking someone out that's split pushing, they're just grouping up against GGLA, who's, well, the counter to group up is to push everything else where they aren't. Yeah, and Yuzuki using that uh, lightning rush to get towards top much quicker than he normally would, been able to just walk in. Mega Zero almost at that uh, Trinity Force point. We do have everybody splitting up a little bit here. Bishu with the golem is just clearing out the back lines in one barrel, so that's looking good for him. Well, it looks like somebody pinged it around the way top. I'm not sure, but Bishu is going to drop a ward. And I like the warding coming out from everybody on the side of GGLA. They're all dropping wards, as well as complexity. Everybody's been dropping wards and helping each other uh, keep every lane visible as much as possible. While we might have a siege coming in from GGLA here, the bubble does not connect. Probably does eat a little bit of damage though for a shovel at ebb and flow. Otter does have static shift now with that. P, uh, BT, but he just got chunked out. The darkness coming in as now they're going out to core Kevs. The tidal wave comes in from the side. They're only connecting with Trooper is going to be slowed for a little bit. A lot of wars in the middle of the line, though, with the Crow Storm to follow up as the slicing Maelstrom comes in the back. Bishu gets the complete burst damage on MA and picks up a double kill. Looking to go in onto Trooper now as he flashes with the body slam, gets the barrel. The slam comes in. Bar oh man, Mega Zero eats the cocoon and blocks the shot as he leaps away from the bubble, dodging from all of that now. Ignite was dropped. I don't know if he's going to be able to pick up a kill here as it's not. Probably Lolo is the sole uh, defender, while we do see GGLA rotate towards Dragon now after a really sloppy fight from both sides. Well, Complexity engaged, and the Tidal Wave may have only hit Trooper, uh -oh. but it zoned... Oh, actually, Ooh. probably. Bubble and auto uh. Uh. <laughs> That is the Ooh. most... That is the most dangerous bubble I have ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen a deadly bubble compared to that one, but... Complexity, they got zoned out by the Tidal Wave, which then allowed Nidus to follow up with a bubble on both Jax and Karma. So two of the damage dealers were not able to get into that fight and follow after the Crow Storm and the Paranoia coming out from Nocturne. Fiddlesticks, he, he, he deals a lot of damage despite just being a support character, but he's also extremely squishy. Nocturne, he can soak up and tank as much damage as he wants to, but when he has no team to follow up on the DPS, the enemy team will kill him and collapse on him, and that's exactly what happened. Great zoning coming out from the side of GGLA. Bishu picks himself up two more kills under his belt, and now Complexity, they gotta be afraid because there's only one outer tower left on the map, and last time they grouped up for an engagement, well, they wound up losing a tower. Yeah, and uh, now it's currently still Complexity with the lead of Dragons 2-1, to one, but we do have a nice siege coming in from the side of GGLA. They have blue buff and otter, Piltover Peacemakers galore are going to come out, as well as crits with the static ship and BT sustain. Ooh, that actually hit. I didn't expect that monster to hit there. But MIA looking to come in, gets the fear on Kevs, but he has Merc Treads. Uh, not Merc Treads, he's got the uh, tenacity from the defensive tree for jungling. While uh, we do see Otter using the snipe, chunking away at uh, Trooper a little bit there. But... Mega Zero is split pushing, trying to ex a something or get a wave going and try to get a tier two. He drops a ward, and I guess he's confident in his team enough to hold this wave with the Dustbringer uh, and the Crow as well as the Qs. The Mantra Q comes in, Yuzuki looking to come in here, and MIA obliterated that bundle of hay is now just nothing as Lot of Mortis goes in the back, dodging away from whatever he can, hits a trap though on his way there. Otter picks up uh, the turret while Yuzuki picks up the kill. Probably goes down as now Bishu picks up a kill, a double kill for Yuzuki, and that is going to be an inhibitor and possibly a Nexus turret as Trooper and Mega Zero are the only people left there. And with Spiderlings and Spider Form, they could look to tank what they can, but GGLA are going to back out. That was a nice bubble actually coming in. Clips just the wing of uh, Trooper on that Corky. The one thing I'm most impressed at with GGLA is their ability to not only just dive a tower, but wait until it's low finish it off in the middle of the dive and have Complexity already committed to an engagement where they think they have their tower available and just have it go down in the middle of the fight. It completely turns the tables on them. It's done it so far. I believe it's the second time that GGLA has been able to do it. Once in the top lane and once in that mid lane here. Jax was split pushing far and away. So in the 5v4 situation, GGLA was like, well, this is pretty easy. So they take down the tower, get a free inhibitor while just losing a second outer tower. They still have a two tower advantage and have a lot of map pressure now with these super minions pushing midway. 
Yeah, and oh man, red buff on cheaper though is very effective. We need to find a good engage for complexity here. Mega Zero is really strong. He's got Merc turrets. He's got the Trinity Force, so it just needs to build maybe a little bit of sustain, maybe a Spear of Sage if he wants to counteract a lot of this AP coming in. But uh, for now, they're still stuck off defending these waves that are going to slowly build up and push, as well as Super Mains down mid. But Baron is going to be a huge point here for if GGLA want to start this one out. There's the the uh, speed up from the shield coming. He flash fears on Nidus. Is there any follow up? Well, the red buff faded away. The stun comes in. He does a mantra on the shield there, but Nidus flashing away keeps himself alive. Now he has Tidal Wave and can potentially look to turn this one. Well, Tidal Wave just came up right now. So Complexity Day knew that Tidal Wave was down. That's why they tried to get the pick on Nidus because he's been setting up a lot of these turnarounds for the side of GGLA. But not being able to burst them down, they immediately back out as soon as they realize their plan went a little bit south. So they don't overcommit, which is what they have to do. They still have two Trinity Force characters on their team. So Trooper and Mega Zero, if they're in the fight together, they have a lot of damage potential. It's just that Mega Zero hasn't been grouped up for these fights. He's been split pushing a lot. Yeah, and speaking of pushing, here's GGLA coming down top, having Gragas lead the charge. He's not afraid of anything. Bishu just, with that death cap and Athenes, is shoving down these waves, as well as just one-shotting backline. Now, we're going to see if MIA can look to find a good Crystal Storm initiation. Well, he does have cages, he does have Philo. I, I don't know if he can survive the burst. I don't know about that either, but if they do want to get an engagement, like we said, under tower, it would work really great for complexity. Unfortunately, GGLA are wailing away on that tower. Caitlyn just chunking it down. It's at about a quarter of HP right now. So it's at that point where, hey, if that tower winds up get, being the focal point you want to fight around, it could go down in the middle of the fight. Yeah, and they're sending Crawley to de defend that bot lane. There's a huge wave that built up there. Super means are now beating into the base. That turret is going to fall in a few more auto attacks. He's supposed to cast goes on the trooper. There, there is a Maelstrom coming in as he's trying to chase down him. And the turret falls to Otter. But Bishu going to get taken out by a lot of Mortis here. Yuzuki going to fall as well. Mega Zero picking up that kill. They almost took out uh, Cork Hebs there. The shield Ooh. comes on to Mega Zero, but it's not enough. The flashing in is Otter. He tries to get the Blue Breach but it's not enough. And he gets the crits on the Prowley. Oh my god, the bubble coming in. And the net into range for the auto attack for Otter to pick up the kill with the Tide Caller's Blessing. But here comes Mega Zero with the home guard defending this home, telling him not to take the base there. Trooper picking up the kill with the machine gun. A lot of Mortis getting forced back. Mega Zero charging into that back line, leaping out Otter. No fear. As the double kill for Trooper gets double buffs. Going up to Nidus now, trying to make this a full blown ace. The inhibitor in the bot lane is getting targeted down by these. Minions, there's so many. Nidus is keeping Trooper's attention though, but Trooper will crit, get the auto attack in the kill. If they lose three inhibitors here, I don't think they could even go for Baron, but either way, there's still three seconds left on Yuzuki and Bishu to come back to life, and they will not be able to even leave their base for a little while. Two inhibitors down in that fight, and as I said, when you have the tower down low, it's a good point to fight around, but GGLA are setting up these engagements around taking that tower down. As soon as it gets within one or two auto attacks from Otter, the tidal wave comes out, the initiation comes in. Problem is, Bishu and Yuzuki both died extremely early in that fight, but some really good plays from Otter, Nidus, and as well Cortez are able to mop up that fight. But they're in Complexity's base, so Complexity has the fountain to go back to and heal against and just come and force them out. But at the same exact time, they buy the amount of time they need for that second inhibitor to go down. So now they have two waves of super minions pushing in pre-30 minutes into this game. Complexity, I don't think they can really even try to stop a Baron attempt here. If they do, those Nexus Towers are going to be paying for it. So GGLA, all they have to do is play the patience game at this point. All right, so now there's a little bit of a lull in the action. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hmm. Oracles has picked up pink wards all over the place. Complexity is around that area. The super main is building up in about two waves down bot. The wave in the mid lane is being dealt with by a lot of mortars. They're trying to check for wards. They're doing as much as possible to get rid of those. There's the mantra being stacked up. It does not connect with Nidus. Otter is going to be able to throw out a snipe. He's going to chunk away at uh, Prowly. While now the Baron Pit is clear, everything is warded still, and GGLA are going to look to start this. Yeah, Actually, GGLA no, they, they backed out. <laughs> yeah, they're just baiting it. Like I said, they could just play the patience game. The longer they keep complexity out of their base, the more the minions will wind up pushing down towards those Nexus Towers. The inhibitor has just respawned, so this is now a case of, do we contest Baron? Do we give up this inhibitor? Sending Mega Zero back, he's one of the stronger members on their team right now, so Baron it is for GGLA. All right, so they're gonna look for a paranoia to try to steal this one. The trap does connect. They need more wards, though. They need a ward. MA is gonna drop it over the wall, okay? Looks it's like a risky Baron, actually. It. They're gonna halt it. They're gonna halt it and wait to clear the crystal coming over the wall. The paranoia, they're going in. He gets it! MIA got the Baron. And now they're gonna look to turn this fight right now as a lot of Mortis gets chunked away. Eats like a cone. Chopper picking to kill the back. 
Got to look to try to get him to Yuzuki, but Otter is going to chunk him away. And now they get a Baron, and they're going to look to go back to base. Lot of Mortis doesn't have Flash, though. He Actually, yes, he did. He just flashed over the wall. Just kidding. I'm a liar. I am a horrific liar. But now, <laughs> MIA picks up Baron, and it's going to be a Baron of Complexity looking to hold. Oh, man. This is something that during the World Finals, Krepa was extremely, extremely key in say talking about was when you have an enemy jungler up on the other team, a Baron is normally going to be a 50-50 situation. Yes, Mega Zero went back and he was defending the inhibitor, but the a little bit of indecision from GGLA. They have burst from Gragas. They have an Elise who chunks down Baron extremely quick, and they have an AD carry applying multiple headshot procs. They just didn't really focus the Baron right from the get-go as soon as Mega Zero was away. They were trying to bait out the ultimate from Law to Mortis, and even though they baited it out, they waited a little bit too long and the 50-50 Baron situation went to the defending team. Now Complexity, they're going to be able to wait for these inhibitors all to come back up, push out against the map, and even if the Baron buff expires at that time, it's Baron well spent to establish themselves back into this game. It was the one thing they needed to try to hold against this very offensive GGLA. Alright, so... Now we're going to see as Complexity Baron up looking strong, going to keep holding off. One more inhibitor to spawn though, but Otter and crew are looking to push down the sun, keep his shoves, keep the minions coming. There's still two exposed inhibitors mid and top, but I don't think GGLA want to fight right now. It's still, even though it's a 10 kill deficit in favor of GGLA, it's only 2.2k gold. So not much of a difference showing now, especially 31 minutes into the game. And now there's like a pause button for Complexity. GGLA, they're like, they want to keep being aggressive, which is just their kind of play style. But in this behalf, if they get too aggressive on a team with Baron, that's going to be giving up more than just a prime objective. That could be potentially getting complexity right back in the game in another fail fight. They're going to siege down on this inhibitor. What they do have on their side is some pushing minion waves, so they can kind of rotate around and take the bottom inhibitor as it respawns. But they still don't want to get into a direct confrontation with complexity straight 5v5. They're looking to land a hero bubble. They're looking to blow someone out of position with a cast. Yeah, and now we're going to see how Baron of Complexity can hold this one down. Super minions are building up down bot. There's going to be three waves of them coming into the base very soon. The inhibitor should be spawning in the next minute or two. Oh, there we go. It's coming up right now. You're clairvoyant. Seconds. I'm, I'm really good at timing these inhibitors, but now um, Otter getting some free shots in. Crowstar coming in, Paranoia coming in as well. MIA looking to go in. He drops a fear on the Kevs. They're focusing Nidus, though. Mega Zero gets bounced back out. A lot of Mortis getting focused, though. Ignite gets down. The Venomous Bite comes through. The Tether going on the beach. The Snipe gets blocked out by Prawley. And they go one for none. The Baron of Complexity looking to hold this one out, but the inhibitor is getting beat into by those super minions now. There's a wave building up top, and little engagements like this are what Complexity they need to come back into it. And... This game suddenly just got very, very interesting. When there are eight kills on the opponent's AD carry and you have a Nocturne and Jax in your composition, do dive is what you go for. And they jump down on Otter. The only right clicks Otter had in that fight were to run away. He burns cleanse, he burns flash, and he just right clicks the heck out of there. No stopping, no auto attacks whatsoever. So the main damage source from GGLA had zero effect in that fight. So a great initiation there from complexity. Like I said, a bad fight from GGLA means that complexity is now completely back in this game. Yes. <laughs> All right. They're going to look to get a dr uh, dragon's not even spawning just yet, but uh, they were looking to see if it was up. So they're not going to get that one just yet. 800 gold deficit now, which is absolutely nothing. That's just a couple of waves and possibly just a kill or two. So we will see. And maybe a turret. Nega Zero is pushing down bot. They're pinging though, as they know where Fiddlesticks and our crew is. Oh man. MIA with the Oracles is clearing all the wards he can as well, trying to deny the vision. There's still that ward in their base. We are going to see how they hold this one out. Bishu with the blue buff going to look to uh, spam out barrels. I think GGLA has a split push, but it's it's impossible to deal with the Mega Zero Jax right now. He's going to play to the Room King. He's got Trinity Force. I am very excited for these next few fights to come in as they do the mantra and the shield to go in. Paranoia coming out. Who is he going to hit? He's looking for somebody. The ward comes out. The ward! Vision. He drops the ward. The tether gets broken, though. This explosive cast to disengage a little bit. Nidus getting caught out a little bit, and they're chasing this one down. The rockets come out. The barrel to blow up. Flash fear! Out of Nidus. Can they get the kill? Though the snipe is going on MIA. The block from Mega Zero with the rockets and the foster spot pick with the kill. Nidus gets taken off. It's a 44 second respawn timer. Yuzuki is bot lane, and they need to shove these waves and start pushing.
They, they, <laughs> am I, these teams, oh my god, complexity. That was a 4v5 catch, and you said GGLA was looking to split push, but their split push champions are not as effective as a Jax. They're nowhere near level of, let's say, an Aatrox or Shen or anything. Kennen is their split pusher, or maybe even Gragas. They don't have the real potential to do that. They need to maybe get into some more fights, but Jax has gotten to be a monster. Trinity Force and Blade of the Rune King, his two primary items, have already been acquired. We see Prowly here on Karma. He's got a Void Staff after his Athenes on Holy Grail, just to penetrate through the defenses that GGLA has been amassing at this point. Even Chooper, he has his two main items in a Trinity Force and a Last Whisper. Anything else he adds him here is a bit of icing on the cake. He looks like he has some magic resistance to survive the burst coming out from GGLA, and he might even get a Bloodthirster to back that up. So Complexity, with that Baron Steel, they've reinvigorated their attitude and have completely come back into this game. If they don't give up an inhibitor to this push coming out from GGLA, who are actually down Knight as their main initiator, this could be looking really good for them. All right, they're gonna lay into this inhibitor and try to take it down, but the Crow Star is being channeled. The shield is applied. Paranoia again. They're going onto Otter as much as possible. Shields away from the stun, but the slicing mushroom still goes through. They are forced to go in full disengage mode. Lot of Mortis is out of there, but now Kevs getting blown up by Trooper and Mega Zero right there. They're going in the lane in the rockets. The big one connected. Otter getting chunked below half, forced to use that ebb and flow to heal him. Is Nidus, and the waves are pushing out again. So we're gonna see Complexity win another fight with just one kill. They're coming back in. They're crawling their way back in. They're taking the gold lead by 1.2k and all right still holding a lot of mortis almost died there but that banshee's veil the shield and his locket saved his life locket of the iron slurry banshee's veil picked up for a lot of mortis he is not going down in any of these fights they are forcing otter out of there and minimizing the amount of physical damage options that the ggla has the rest of their team elise kenan gragas Magic damage. When they have so much magic resist on their team, if they force Otter out and keep diving on him, keep catching him, and it's not even Otter's fault. That fight, he was a little far forward. In the previous fight, MAI put down a ward to give Lord of Mortis the vision to dive on Otter. If his parents is not up, they're not going to be able to win a fight. They're going to get another Baron. They're going to sneak this one out. There's no wards besides GGLA, and now GGLA are coming. Twin Shadows actually activated to spot them out. It's going to give it away, and now the shield goes on to Mega Zero. Tidal Wave comes in. It's going to knock up two, but it's not going to stop they them from doing close. it. They're getting it. The Explosive Cast just... comes in. The Smite, though, from Lot of Mortis. The stun is going to come out. It doesn't connect. The Paranoia goes down. They're chasing out of Otter. He's got Red Buff. He's got Tide Colors Blessing. He is going to be able to kite this one down. The Barrel goes out. Doesn't connect. Trooper gets forced to go back. The Snipe comes in a Lot of Mortis, though. MIA looking for the Crow, but now Trooper is on the back line. Can he get taken out here? It looks like it will be enough. Otter picks up the kill. They go into Lot of Mortis. The Hedge on the Crit. He crits three times in a row, picks up a double, and now he's going to look to chase this one down and possibly clear our three inhibs. We do have three members of Cole still available with Baron, and they are going to look to try to hold this one out. But Otter, with the play, the static ship and IE, critting three times, picking up two kills, and now possibly looking to pick up inhibitors. And this what? could smell like game if they kill Mega Zero or anybody else. When Complexity doesn't initiate, they are not able to force Otter out of the fight. When Otter is able to sit in the back and just auto attack away, he dominates Complexity. Oh, there is a slicing maelstrom. The fear, though, stopping him from getting anywhere near MIA for the last tick for a stun. That's going to be the second inhibitor. The third inhibitor is going to go down very soon. 3v5 is not what Complexity wants to try to fight here. Mega Zero is strong, but he's not that strong. As the bubble connects on a karma, looking, they're doing to try to do a bit of damage. He flashes away from the explosive cast. There's the barrel going in. Nidus or goes down though. As now that is going to be triple inhibitor and GGLA backing off. They get Nidus, but at what cost? The Shirelias. Three inhibitors down. Uh oh. All right, the Shirelias came out. Looks like they were trying to chase, but they cannot. And now complexity on the back foot once again. Going to have to defend double super minion waves. Well, oh let, boy. Let's see if. GGLA can play the patient game a little bit better this time around. This time, instead of two in Hibs down, they have three. Baron is still up on some members of Complexity. Keely, or primarily Mega Zero oh. and Crowley. Oh, that jumps at the Spiderling, actually, as Mega Zero cool. chasing him down. But they do have Baron buff on the He's members that need it still. Mega Zero wants to try to win this. He's trying to get a kill. He needs one more leap strike. And there it is. And he's going to go on a beast. You paranoia's pop. The diving beast you at the tier two in the bot lane. They pick up the kill. They're going to try to get this turret. And the Supermans haven't pushed up just yet. They're building up slowly in the lanes, though. It's going to let Lotta Mortis tank this one down. They're going to get this turret. Are they going to go for an inhibitor that's two members dead for 40 seconds plus? And everybody's coming out. Twin shadows get popped in. There's double Super Minions coming in. The wave is slowly catching up. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. are looking to fight in a 5v3 situation. If there is a time to win the game, it's going to be now. They need to go in on GGLA before the minions hit their base. They have about two or three ways to The storm. The fear. Nidus gets feared up. He's going to get bursted down and take it out. Can they clear this one out before the minions reach the base? As Mega Zero zones Otter, but Otter is just destroying him with all the damage. They're going to get the inhibitor. Can they do anything else? It looks like they will get the inhibitor. Shirelius comes out. Can he get the fear on Otter right now? He gets in range. The cleanse doesn't come out, though. He holds on to that one for the next fight. And that's going to be at least one inhibitor. The snipe comes out on the MIA. The shield will block a little bit of that damage. Yuzuki going to try to stop them from backing because those minions are making a beeline down that mid lane and going to do a ton of damage to those Nexus turrets. Now it's up to GGLA to do what Complexity did and stop them from backing in this situation. The Complexity don't get back. This game is done due to super minions right now. It's intense. You've never seen a team come back from three inhibitors down, let alone take an opponent's inhibitor in that case. But can they save their base? They have to hot foot it back. Super minions are piling up on the Nexus. Cooper is going to be here to defend, but I don't necessarily know. One of those Nexus towers might wind up going down. They're both at about half health. All GGLA really have to do is chase them back to base, group up outside, and push in for the win. But can they do it? If Complexity engages, they are winning. If they are the ones to get engaged on, then they're losing. So we'll have to see. Do they wait for these super minions to stack up? What is the next play from GGLA? Because they are that close to victory, and they don't want to throw it again. <sighs> oh, jeez. All right. So we still have about, I think, two to three minutes on the inhibitors to respawn. So... The double super minions are going to be applying a lot of pressure for the next two minutes as they're going to just keep pouring into the base. That's six minions uh, a wave of super minions coming in. And with the amount of damage they already did to those Nexus turrets, it's just a matter of time before they just build up in the lanes and stack us four and then slowly stack up to six. It's going to be very hard for Complexity to hold this one off. They're going to have that one super minion spawning from the base down bot, but it's not enough to combat the amount of super minions that are going to be spawning from that bot lane that are currently building up, which is four in that wave of two well let's see how well complexity can play tower defense right now i mean that is basically what it's come down to at this point they need to defend these nexus towers and if they can take a fight somehow they can win it but now otter he's got a guardian angel so the method complexity has been winning with has pretty much been dive on otter force him not to auto attack in the fight. but now he won't be afraid with the guardian angel on his side that crit net built over peacemaker combination blowing up mia now we're gonna see, can Complexity hold this one? There's three super minions in that bot wave, super laying into it. Oh, and Thornmail on Mega Zero right now, gonna negate some of that damage at least and bring it back. But the minions up top are beating into this wave and stopping it from pushing. Oh god, the waves are all over the place in Complexity right now. Can they do anything else? Kevs, the paranoia coming out, the stun of the Yuzuki. It's gonna be Mega Zero forcing the Zonius Hourglass before slicing Maelstrom. Can they do anything else? It's gonna be Mega Zero taking about Crowstorm in the back though. Otter is laying into whoever he can. Mega Zero going out to critting him, checking him. The stun is coming out as well. The cleanse and the, the kills. But Mega Zero lays into the drain tanking from MIA. Can he pick up Otter though? He can! He killed Otter! All right, so it's gonna be four dead and one alive. It's Night is her main. Okay, can Complexity look to heal up and stop the waves while they chase down Nidus? The bubble comes out, keeps him safe. Trooper's gonna go back to base. They're gonna lose one Nexus turret for this one though. And now that's gonna be 50 seconds of relaxation for the time being while they just clear waves. They get their one Nexus turret goes down. They take a four for zero. Complexity didn't just beat GGLA in their base. They lost nobody in that trade. That is insane how they came out ahead in that in that fight. I just, I can't even know how. They just isolated out targets. Yuzuki was too far forward. The rest of GGLA was disengaging. They jumped down onto Otter after Yuzuki was gone. First was the paranoia from Nocturne. Then the cycling came in and Jax left onto him afterwards. The Guardian Angel pots, but Jax is a beast at this point in the game. He has Thorn Mail. He has Blade of the Rune King. He has Trinity Force. He was able to pick up that kill on Otter. And after Otter goes down, there is no other damage coming out that the side of complexity is all too worried about. Best part about that is one inhibitor comes up, they all come up right after another because of the way that GGLA took them down. One Nexus turret for a four for a zero. That was definitely complexity holding on to this game and holy crap is it exciting. Complexity have the lead right now in gold. All right, so. <laughs> 
Wow, 6,000 gold lead for the side of Complexity. They climbed back into this one. They're holding it out. Now they're grouping up top. Uh, they're grouping in the mid lane a little bit, trying to push back the waves and just keep everything from pushing. They have Superman still piling up on that bot lane. That's going to be a huge wave. Baron respawn. That is uh, currently live. Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. And I'm pretty sure neither team cares about that right now. Rattless Crystal Scepter, Zonius Hourglass for Yuzuki, but Thornmail, Hex Drinker. Blade of the Rune King and Trinity Force for Mega Zero to combat Otter is just so huge at this point. All right, <laughs> and 352 CS for Trooper over Otter with 319. They're clearing out the wards. They don't have Oracles, but they have pinks all over the place. Snipe comes out, gonna poke away that uh, Banshee's Veil from Trooper. But now, who who is gonna make the first move? Who is gonna make the first play to decide the outcome of this game? One false step can mean the end. Well, there's already a little bit of backlash for GGLA because unfortunately Cortez took red buff away from Otter and Otter with red buff has been able to kite complexity in most situations. Trooper has his red though, so the AD carry from complexity side is going to have the utility that he needs to try to come out ahead in these trades. It's insane as we're heading into six items for multiple people right now. Six item Caitlyn going up towards the... Well, four and a half item jacks. We even have Corky already at five items, just maybe going for a Bloodthirster after with that Vampiric Scepter. I think he wants to go for that rather than the Blade of the Rune King. Yeah. But we're looking across the board right now. Karma has approached a lot of items. Death Cap, Athenes on Holy Girl, and Void Staff. They're gonna get She's Baron. going to be hitting like a truck. And with well, complexity, they're starting the Baron. This is how they lost the fight last time and lost three. But they don't have Otter. Let's see Otter's if they spot. wind up losing this. Oh, Otter's away! Outer is away. They're gonna use the mantra for the shield. They're gonna go in paranoia. The explosive cast gonna knock away MIA and probably though the barrel in the back line, but it's not gonna stop Trooper. He's gonna lay into Nidus, the slicing Maelstrom to try and disengage, but they pick up the kill on Nidus. They're going in right now. Mega Zero is just shredding through the team as the flash and the lightning, the lightning rush is gonna keep away Yuzuki. They chase this one down, they pick up one, and now 50 seconds left on Nidus. There's an open inhibitor bot. Look at the wave up top though! And now they're gonna use the mantra for the shield to go back in towards the Baron, get that one, and maybe look to push down a lane finally after finally coming back from three inhibitors. No Otter, no damage. Otter was down bottom, clearing out the last amount of Superman. He went back down there again! And they're gonna be just going for this Baron! GGLA wants to try to contest this, but now they are four against five, with just like last time, Corkaz deals no damage to Corky right now! Oh, Mega Zero went in! He drops the Ignite, he can't get the kill. The Snipe coming in, though! Can they pick up the kill? The Flash and the Monster! The Shield! The Shield is gonna keep him alive for a little bit longer, as now Yuzuki is gonna get taken out through the Zonius. Otter, though, lays in a Prowly, picks up the kill! He goes back into Baron! They're gonna finish this one off. Smite gonna come in from Lottimore as they get it. Otter, though, may look to find a kill or two. Bishu is with him. The Twin Shadow Squad, they're gonna slow and reveal Bishu, but they're gonna back out and out. Barroned up complexity. Everybody is alive besides Prowly, so four members with that one, and they're gonna go back and heal. This is some plague decision making by GGLA, something that Complexity had problems with when they were in the spring split of the LCS. They had such a large advantage and they lost it. Then they came back and got the advantage again, but they just are unable to finish a game. So many eggs are in the Otter basket right now that if he is not with the team, Complexity knows that is a one fight for them. Twice he showed bottom lane, twice complexity go for the Baron. First time they snipe up a kill on Nidus, and the second time they secure the Baron. All right, so <laughs> Baron up complexity once again, looking to make some kind of advance. They have 10, almost 10,000 gold lead at this point. Holy crap, the Spectral's Cow is picked up for Phil Six. The Bloodthirster is finished for Corky. Uh, Corky also picked up Dragon Voice Staff for Yuzuki. Phantom Dancer for Otter, though, now. So he is trying to combat whatever he can with all the crits that he gets. He's also got the GA and potted up like crazy. He doesn't have oracles though. Red and blue pot active on him for a little while longer. And all right, this this next fight can mean the game. Well, now it's GGLA who have to be very afraid about complexity coming into their base and trying to take down some inhibitors. They still have one inhibitor tower left open on their side, but two exposed inhibitors and a barren up complexity. Well, everybody but Prolly. Everybody bleh, has barren except for Prolly on the side of complexity. So. This has definitely been a very exciting conclusion to our night he had. It's <sighs> 24 to 24. The kills look even. The towers are not quite even. One Nexus tower is down on complexity side, but they have a 10,000 gold lead. How much does that mean at this late point of the game? We'll have to see. It's not all too, too much, but if you're looking across the board, there's actually a deficit for Prolly where there's a slight advantage in top and jungle for the side of complexity. Otter, like we said, he is the prime carry here for GGLA. If he dies in this fight, that's going to be it. Complexity wins.
Yeah, Paranoia's gonna come out, though. They're gonna zone them away from this inhibitor. They're gonna get it. Cocoon lands on the Mega Zero. He gets the shield. He gets out. They drop the Mantra Inner Flame and zone right around. They're gonna loop towards mid now. A lot of Mortis and M Mega Zero can tank whatever they need to tank for these turrets. Barrel's gonna connect with the shield from probably will absorb all that damage. They're gonna steal away red buff. They're not gonna be able to steal away blue as Bishu does have that on him. There's a huge wave up top that's a mass, though. So it might force a response, but we could also look to see them rotate um, mid, but it looks like they're gonna actually go back, send Mega Zero and Trooper. Oh, never mind. Mega Zero cancels the back. Trooper's gonna be the one they send back. It's a very calculated and calm reaction that Complexity is going to have here. They take that inhibitor and then they back off. Now GGLA are pushing out of their base, but they have a super minion wave pushing against them. So if they don't make something happen, Complexity can play the game they did before. Stop them from backing and force that super minion wave to push down onto the side of GGLA's Nexus Tower. All right, well, here it comes. <laughs> We're gonna see. When that Baron falls, we might see GGLA look to make their move. There's Super Minions pushing down the bot lane. There's going to be about three waves of them. GGLA is not going to look to send anybody back to deal with this. They're going to look to end. There is still that one Nexus turret that is down. There's still damage on the secondary one that's still up. So we are going to see as Paranoia is available. There's Ooh, flashes for everybody. Here. Oh, here he goes. There's the Twin Shadows. The Paranoia is going to come. He's flying in. Going to go into that circle, but gets the fear onto nobody as he's forced to back out. Trooper on the other side of the wall. They're laying in. Tim, that Banshee's blocks with the explosive cast. As now they see everybody going in. Yazuki's in the back line. Gets taken out by Trooper. Mega Zero gets the shield. He is completely tanky through all of this. Going to try to chase on a Nidus or man. He can. He needs one more hit, but the dodge comes out now. The Repel is going to keep Corkhez safe. They're chasing on the auto. They get the GA. They're going to drop the bubble from Nidus, though. It's not going to connect anybody. And the Cocoon is going to stop Trooper while the rest from Otter comes out. He is dead. He is finally dead. That is going to be game. They're pinging on the inhibitor. Kevs is just done with this game. That is GG. Bishu's done. The Surrender Vote comes out. That oh, is game. Complexity, complexity win. Complexity oh comes God. back from three inhibitors down. And they what? take the game against GGLA to remain undefeated here in the NACL. What an amazing comeback coming out from them. And I've really got to say, the new addition of Yuzuki, communication issues, I think, were the main cause. In that last fight in the base, you could see what, I was what I'm going to be talking about here. We have Kennen going forward into the team, while the rest of them are cutting backwards and primarily peeling for Otter, who is the main damage in that entire team composition. Yuzuki goes forward, and Yuzuki dies. Once that happens, there's no AoE Kennen. There's no worry about that. It's a 5v4 situation. Trooper may have been on the backside trying trying to solo 1v1 against Otter, but because everybody else was going backwards and Yuzuki went forwards, GGLA lost out in the end after having such a huge lead in that game. Props to them for getting that advantage, but bigger props have to go out to Complexity for maintaining their undefeated oh. record in impressive, impressive fashion. Well, I'm not going to have a voice tomorrow, so... Good thing I'm not casting, but... <laughs> that, that, oh, that game, oh, that was the best... Best best game of the week, calling it. <laughs> that was phenomenal play from both sides, but complexity coming back from three.